Hello family, happy Sunday. I don't know when you're watching this video, in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the late evenings. But I want to say thank you for coming over, spending your time with me. And as you do know, I've touched on a story here a time or two. Recent story on Candy Burris and Mama Joyce trying to tell her how to live her life. And for the life of me, I don't know why Candy still comes on over here and tells us what her mom feels about her relationship with Todd. Now we already told her long, long, long time ago, okay? That you can't mix the two, okay? Because once you get finished being upset with Todd, because Todd did this, that, and the third, you go over there tell all your family members, they ain't gonna forget. They ain't gonna forget. Mm -mm. You're gonna be done forgotten and moved on, but they are not going to have forgotten and move on with you, okay? And then with Todd doing his own little thing with his own biological daughter, you know, taking her to the strip club and then, you know, not being there, not speaking to her for a month and this came out your mouth and Todd pretty much agreed with it. When he gets mad at Kayla, he don't talk to her. Now, what kind of father is that? But we're not talking about his father uh, capabilities at this time. We're going to be talking about a little hodgepodge of pretty much everything uh, during this video. But it's going to be short and sweet, some of the things. But I just want to say thank you to my families. Thank you to my ride or dies. Yes. Uh, let me shout them out. Valerie and Naylor. Lynette. A U uh A Y O O um well, no, I'm sorry. These are my day ones. They're my new ones. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start with my day ones. My ride or dies. As always be down in them comments. Telling me this, that, and the third. And I love them for it. And I don't even probably have to mention their name again. But I'm going to mention it. And then this is going to be a new thing I'm doing. I'm going to be welcoming my family. As I see them come aboard. With uh, every day's discussion. Every time I put out a video. And I notice somebody new in the house. That came by. They want to sit and talk with me and discuss some things because it was on their mind just like it was on my mind okay uh yeah we're gonna shout them out as i see them come but we're gonna shout out my day ones again and we say uh we got pamela nicholson thia salvage miss hollywood doreen rose land lady g marisol white ronald boykins real talk with lady d sunray tv Shelly Hutchison, um, Lady D, Charla, Charla, Thomas, Rita Hopkins, Barbara Kelsey, Joyce Johnson, Jerry Hendrickson, Iris Epperson, and Ivy C, Perlene Watson. Yes, and I don't know where the hell West Griffin is. You know you need to be up in here. I need more men over here understanding what I'm talking about. Because I know they know what I'm talking about, whether they want to admit to it or not. They kind of hard-headed. You know, you got to get them in with the food and this, that, and the third. And have them sit and have a conversation with me. But it is what it is. Y'all go get them uh, men on over here. Boys, whatever you, we want to look at them at the time. Because uh, we're going to be getting on Snoop Dogg ass in a few minutes. Okay? We're going to be getting on his ass because he can't be ginning and juicing and got the rolly on your arms and want the women to, to rock with him and then he's sitting out there trying to dog uh gail king when gail king is doing her job as a journalist and asking the small hard questions and then we got beyonce little baby girl looking like all oh, her dad all up in her dad you know what i'm saying we can say whatever we want to say but they damn sure made blue eye when they made her but i'm kind of mad at beyonce and jay-z they sitting around here letting this girl that's what eight years old seven eight years old wearing lipstick and you, you don't do that you know you got perverts out here and I, I, I want them to do better because they damn sure can do better sitting out sitting down for the national anthem which we know hell everybody should be sitting down uh when the national anthem comes <laughs> because they know everybody ain't getting treated right it ain't just the uh brown and black community it's some other people getting dogged out uh too so i think we just need to hold up on that uh anthem all together until we can get it right as a um uh, humanity because everybody counts right here you know what i'm saying every soul every spirit every culture every race counts so until uh they get that shit together don't nobody need to be standing from the national anthem and yeah i said it i said it and i stand by it okay because it's just wrong but you know gotta have my sidebar here and there 
Now I want to welcome my new comments that I see showing up in my um comment section here and there and ain't doing nothing but showing up and being respectful but i need them to stay in the comment section i need them to stay in interaction hell if you want to come over here uh during the week cool you want to come over here on the weekend that's even better and if you want to show up just on sunday do what you gotta do okay but i want to see y'all in here all the time if you ain't saying nothing to me you know trying to make me laugh or, or, or crazy you know try to say some you know crazy nice stuff with me and we sit and toss it up for a few seconds i want you all to get in and interact with y'all other family members they making opinions down now some you're gonna agree with some you're not but the only thing i say we ain't got no wrestling match up here and we ain't finna tear out my house hell no that'll get you quick fast thrown out of the house and we won't see you no more invitations to come back but we want y'all to interact with each other because i know i got good family they show their asses here and there but don't we all show our ass sometime in our lifetime yes we do <laughs> I put on my show mine every day, but you know, I had to have some tag when I'm out there uh, interacting with people in the real world. Because I still consider this a real world too on reality YouTube, but it's a different kind of world. All right, but let me go on and say hey. Let me go on and say hey to my newcomers. I see be uh, showing up in my comment section, showing love on me because I'm going to show love right back at you. Because I said, there's no me without you, and there's no you without me. Okay, it's a family affair. We got Stephanie Humphreys. We got Annie Nat or Gannotts. We got, oh, she spelled her last name G A N T T. We got Carmen uh, Vasquez. We got uh, Maria Pierce. We got Carolyn Christ. Christensen, we got Esther Ferris, Shawnika Tucker, Miss Stacy M. Jackson, Linda C., uh, Tina Williams, Tiffany Badger, Pat Mitchell, Lisa, we I mean Leslie Will Williams, Sharon Young, Rose Mitchell, uh, Nita Young, was that Rita Young? Hell, I think it's Nita Young. Then we got um, what is this? I, my damn right. Oh, Lynette A U A Y O O R U R U, uh, Desiree Cruz, Pat Mitchell, Judith um, Rice, I think it is, uh, Cinderella got her prince. Mm, I think that's about it, y'all. That I saw in the ones that I didn't get a chance to see. Charge it to my head, not my heart. Uh, but like I said, I was really trying to catch up and get people uh, that I haven't recognized because I don't want nobody to say, "Well, why she she um shouted them out?" I've been on her page. I know how we are. I know how we can get cash sometimes. Sometimes I do that shit too. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real all day, every day with you all. But since I took up that time, you know I'm always like that. I like to show love. Uh, I like to give love. I, 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 you know, I'm just a lovely person. And I'm telling y'all, when I hit 10,000, we're going to have to invite some people to come down at y'all own expense. Not on mine, but I'll try to have y'all somewhere like an event hall. And y'all come, we have like a barbecue inside. And we just be sitting playing that old school music, you know, like Frank and Beverly and Mays, Isley Brothers. Uh, the spinners, the four tops, the temptations. Shit, let me say it now. Ooh, old school, okay? Mary and the Vandellas, uh, the Supremes. Uh, some Aretha Franklin movie. You know I like Luther, but them for the lovers, honey. We got to play that uh, as we leaving because, hell, that's baby making music. That's when you don't got drunk and you ready to go be with your woman, your man, or however you get down, honey. Yeah, we got, ooh, child, I'm just getting happy thinking about it. <laughs> But that's when I hit the ten thousand dollar, uh, the ten um, so ten thousand subscriber list. Then we could talk, do big things. How they say, uh, T. I say big things, popping little things, stopping. Yes, honey, y'all can come share y'all love with me. We gonna sit down and we just have another little session, but it be live and in color, okay? Uh, but anyway, that's something I would look forward to in the future. We all can make plans and and and. Uh, think about things we want to do how we want to interact with people and that's what i want to do with you all but of course it takes time it takes effort and it takes money and if y'all can get here in atlanta i'm willing to put up the venue you see what i'm saying but you got a rsvp because we ain't got no time to be spending money and having things too crowded or, too, uh, or not uh, enough people to come in as you can see what i'm saying but we look forward to that we look forward to that but until then uh in the meantime and in between time we will stay on the tube and we will 
continue to delight each other and talk about stuff, okay? Because that's all we're doing. We ain't saying it's truth. We ain't saying it's truth. But where there's smoke, there is fire. <laughs> okay? But we're going to get on into this story. We ain't going to tear it too long. We already done took a little bit too long. Just uh, congratulate my family for being so wonderful to me, okay? Um, so... Yeah, let's get on into the story with this can of birds mess. And, and, and she's sitting up here telling us what Mama Joyce wants. I don't know if it's a storyline. Piss poor storyline. Because ain't no way in the hell that's going to be true in my life and anybody else in my family life. Hey, don't tell me about your man or your woman if you're going to go right back to them. Get back into that shit. And y'all work it out. Because I don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to make no comments of what I feel about the situation. And then 24-hour turnaround time, you back with that person. Shoot, it ain't going to be on your face. But it ain't gonna be on mine, okay? And I tend to like don't like to get in family issues anyway, unless we talk about some domestic violence. Then we had to come out with all the guns locked, loaded, and ready to spray. You hear what I'm saying? Like, cause I don't condone anybody putting their hands on anybody, and don't take too kindly to people cheating. Cause I feel like this: if you're gonna cheat, you might well gonna be by yourself. Ain't no sister dragging everybody down cause you want to be an asshole, okay? But let's get on down to the story. Um. My girl Angela, Angelina Vasquez over at the Atlanta Black Star wrote up this article for us. She entitled it, None of Us Trust His Little Ass. Fan side with Candace's mother as distrust of Todd grows. <laughs> and I'm like, where did y'all start trusting Todd? Shit, ain't nobody on here. Oh, damn, she damn for the world. <laughs> Been trusting Todd. No, we been just letting things unveil as well as they've been unveiled. I'm like, I'm, I'm loving on y'all. Don't my two baths I be having all the time. All the time on my show because they just give me love. I want to show love and that's love. But yes, we got this story from Atlanta Black Star. And they talking about uh, Mama Joyce falling out with Todd. She ain't never been with Todd. I'm telling some of my family members that have been arguing with me before when I did an article on uh, talking about Todd and Riley ain't together. And Riley been busting his chops ever since he came into the picture. And I had some of my family over here sitting talking shit to me. Talking about, now nah, you don't know what you talking about Kenny already done squashed that uh about Todd and, and Riley ain't got no good relationship hell no nah, can't can't Candy was doing damage control, okay? What she wanted to sell us that her family was all good. But ain't nobody's family is all good. Let's just be truthful, okay? It's always going to be some type of discord. But that discord has to be worked out between that family member and that particular household, all right? You can't just be going around throwing tea all around the family circle because then it's going to come up another whole story. Well, you know what? They're going to say, Todd messing with animals out there. Or, or Candy going to mess with a white man out there. Or uh, they both swinging. You know, the stories just can come out everywhere until you get it from that horse's mouth or you don't get it from that horse's mouth. I love it speculation, but she can't like to run her mouth to her family and her friends and somehow it all gets circulated and it gets confused and more stories added to the soup. And before you know it, you thought you were having vegetable soup, but hell, it coming out as a, a gumbo. <laughs> Up, gumbo. We thought we were having vegetable soup, hell, and we probably have burgers and fries on the side. But anyway, yes, Candy is telling Todd, having a sidebar with him on a conversation she had privy just between her and her mama. And I'm like, honey, have you not heard? Don't let the right hand know what the left hand doing. Don't put out too much information that you're going to have to explain later on. That was a lie from the beginning. And we already know you had an affair with a married man, Candy. And you see how Block treated you. And how he half recognized Paul Riley over there. Giving her a complex that she probably going to have to sit in therapy about. Why my biological daddy didn't want me. No, honey. Candy, put your shit in now that you was over there flirting. Fooling around with a married man. And that his first love came to his first family. And it wasn't Candy. Tell the truth and shame the devil, Candy. Straighten this shit out before Riley get too invested and get in her own grown ship. And she see what you really tried to feed her was a damn lie. Okay, I'm just saying, Candy. Because get me mad when you don't want to, uh, or women like you don't want to fess up to what they did to have their children in the situation that they are groaning, growing up in and has grown grown up in okay i'm sure mama joyce done told you about why she ain't stay with your dad 
And matter of fact, Kenny, where's your daddy? Why you don't broadcast your daddy sometime? Are you having daddy issues yourself, girl? That would be a great storyline. Instead of bringing Todd in this mess all the time, because Todd going to drop his own tea. And somebody out there is going to catch it. And then that's when we're going to come after you about, what, what, what is Todd doing? Okay, what is Todd doing? But I need you to clean up your foundation first. <laughs> Before you try to go into somebody else's household and try to destroy them or talk about them. Hint, hint, Portia Williams and Dennis McKinley. You know how you always got something to say about them candy. Candy girl, get back into your own world. All right. Don't disturb somebody else's tea. And what they got cooking over in their house when you ain't got your shit straightened out, can That's all I'm saying. Remember Tanya Sams? Okay, you remember her? And you and Cynthia and Kenya was talking about uh, the cookie lady. Mm. And look where we at now. But like I said, if it's a storyline, that's a good storyline to bring back. But I don't know. Because people going to get on you both ways. Why are you telling your mama all this? Why is she knowing all of this? And then... uh. We got to take sides. We either got to be with you and Mama Joyce or we got to be with you and Tall. And we don't know which way to go. Well, hell, I know which way to go, okay? I'm going to go the right way. I ain't going to be telling folks my business and my family if I know I'm going to stay with the man that I married, okay? That ain't going to happen. And y'all going to know some shit. I'm going to break it down to you when I'm leaving his ass. And y'all be trying to say, well, can you work it out? Hell, no, I can't work it out because he did this, 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 this. And then you know how your family go, why you ain't tell me? Because I ain't want to tell you because I didn't know, quite frankly, if I was going to be with the Joker or not. Okay. So now I'm not going to be with the Joker. I'm releasing everything. Okay. So now that's when you know. When you need to know. But then I'm kind of confused, Candy, on this story that uh, Mama Joy is saying that you bought a house for her. And your name is on the house. And she's just scared if anything happens to you. Todd would try to come and remove her. Now I'm like, Candy, did you lease this house for your mama? You know, you you paying the monthly rent, but you ain't got it as your house. Or why you didn't put the house in your mama's name along with the gift wrapped it box that had the deed inside that had relinquished you all rights to the house? If Mama Joyce ain't handling her affairs right, are you scared that she may have a man uh come? Finagle her out her own house of a present you gave to her. Tell me, Candy, these are the things I want to know. Because your mama shouldn't be worried about the house that she living in when it's supposed to be her house. But now I'm hearing your name is on the house. And probably the sole uh, name on the house unless you're the owner of the house. And then Mama Joyce is the co-owner of the house. Or, you know what I'm saying, you got two people on the, the mortgage deed or whatever. But if you bought the house outright... You know, done it that way. Shouldn't your mama name be solely on that house? Or is it she don't trust you and your husband? You don't trust your mama and who she dating? Okay, what what's going on, Ken? That's the truth to you. And that would definitely give you a damn good storyline. Okay, we got to put Todd in the per, uh, per diem all the time of a triangle of conflict. Because we already know there's going to be some shit. We just, you know, not necessarily waiting for it to happen. But we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. Uh, in, in words and in, in, in per se words you know what I'm saying we already know that's a factor <laughs> cause he ain't changed in my book yes he's an opportunist cause I ain't seen nothing Todd has done on his own okay cause I know about these Todd, Todd, Todd Tucker productions but I haven't seen anything come out with credits rolling his name okay so we can't put that claim to fame so we're gonna have to go with the latter candy that you're taking care of him you have always take care of your men and ain't nothing wrong with that don't get me wrong I couldn't do it but if you can do it and you love it I like it you know what I'm saying I like it all day every day some women do that but then don't complain because you bought and paid for them and you knew what you were buying okay that's all I'm saying. But let's get on into this story because I have so much speculation, so much unanswered questions. And like I said, it's pretty much recycled news, but they're just trying to take it on a different spin. And those were some things that I had brought out. Number one, Candy, why your mama house ain't in her name solely if you outright bought it and she just have to pay taxes at the end of the year. And that's buying your mother a house, lock, stock, and barrel, okay, with no strings attached. So 
uh yeah and a second thing is why are you still involving your mom and telling her everything and why are you still telling your husband what your mom uh, is thinking about him no if it's not a financial thing you should not be uh starting a fire in your own backyard and then it, when it rages out of control and get too close to your house and your family then you want to cry out about it no candy we can't do that that's why i said you still drinking from your mama's breast you're still titty sucking candy you're not drinking solo you're not drinking in your big sippy cup okay i need you to pull up and pull up now because now that's going to make todd in essence go and be the uh, opportunist we feel he's already is you know he's been doing it low key but now he's going to be out saying you can't stand up for me i'm your husband okay i'm your husband for how many years and you still not trusting me because you still telling me stuff about your mama i ain't trying to please your mama i'm trying to be a good man for you and the fam but then again we know how that is how he got Kayla out there looking all kind of crazy. He don't want to help her. He want her to grow up. He want her to stand on her own merit. He don't feel he need to give her anything. She need to claim her own. Be her own woman. Now she fall off somewhere. He'll be there to catch her. I guess. I don't know. Because it's uh, demeanor. And how he's running with her in these streets. And showing us. I don't know if he would be there. But I'm pretty sure she got a solid mama. That's been there from her since day one. Okay. <coughs> so yeah and then i i don't know candy i don't know i don't know because see and i i have that concern too uh with mama joyce and we don't want to probably talk about what mama bertha and uh aunt well aunt nora and aunt bertha think about the situation okay because if he's doing his own biological daughter like that what you think he gonna do to riley and that ain't even his blood okay and he know from day one okay he's a day one believer uh, Riley didn't give a shit about him. She even said in them past clips, that ain't my dad. Hell, you even told us. She said that when y'all got in arguments here and there, when her and Tar had disagreements, she said it to his face. You ain't my daddy. And she right. He don't want to go up against Big Block. That's a long, tall drink of water. We're looking like a bear type of demeanor and, and, and appearance. Shit, I wouldn't want to go up the uh, block either. You know, I was drunk as hell. <laughs> I'd rather fall down in fetal position, okay? No, so nah, -uh. Todd don't want to toss with that man. And then again, I don't know what kind. I think she get that shit from uh her daddy's side, Riley Mean side, and that's good to have. But I mean, a lot, uh, if your daughter can see what's going on, and she don't trust Todd with the money, can that's why she be trying to become a lawyer, an entertainment lawyer? If she keep on pursuing herself, you think she's gonna sit there and let you have handle all your finances over, so it can miss her and Riley and Baby Blaze, and probably go to Todd. Todd ain't gonna give it to uh kayla either he's selfish now so what makes you think if you die today can he gonna straighten out and make sure all the kids are good hell no Todd gonna make sure his self is good how they call self-preservation <laughs> And he's going to be using your money entertaining and whining and dining other women that he chooses to see fit that he want to settle with that particular night. Because I don't think he'll get married again unless he finds somebody just says uh, he found you. Okay, because I'm thinking if you were still in your old house going through your old ways, y'all never would have met because he wouldn't have looked at you. You were small potatoes. You were probably on his level or maybe a little lower. Okay, but since... Phaedra had to put you to you two together even though y'all both were on the same set and could have made this happen without it being a, a third party such as Phaedra pause it would have made it work and you would have did what it had to do but it ain't like that well let me step on into the store and see if I could find anything new um like I said the story was written by Angelina Vasquez uh she put as a title, none of us trust his little ass. Fans side with candid uh, mother as distrust of Todd grows. For every step forward, Candace Burr's husband, Todd Tucker, and his mother-in-law, Mama Joyce, managed to take it back. Okay, it, pull it, go two steps further. Hey, take two steps back. Uh, yes, honey, I don't think it would, child. That would have been a triangle if Miss Sharon Todd's mama was still living. Because they were battling it 
out. Even though I think she was a sacrifice uh, for Todd to gain more notoriety. But that's just me. You know, if you into the, uh, what do you call it? The conspiracy theories and stuff. But I touch and go in, in that little frame of thoughts of thinking and rationalizing as well. Uh, yeah. She mysteriously died so soon after they got married. Mm. Okay. But, you know, hey, you never know when your number's up. So, we'll just... Throw that to cost another win, but we'll put it in the back of our memory banks. The file as unsolved at this time, okay? But yeah, if Mama Sharon was still living, Mama Joyce and her, that would be their storyline for uh, for Candy Birds and Todd climbing on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I think she would have succeeded being over Nene because everybody would have been checking for Mama Sharon and Mama Joyce. <laughs> And Todd keeping her on one side of the ring. And Candace seeking the other side of the ring. And I don't even think maybe Blaze or Ace would have been born. Because they would have been tearing that house up. Okay. Then tearing up who going to keep the grandchildren. Who's spending more time with the grandchildren. What's ain't fair on that end of the stick shit. <laughs> That would have been something to see, but we didn't get a chance to because um, she's no longer here. She's on another plane of existence. God bless Mama Sharon. God bless Mama Sharon. Okay. But getting back into this article, it says, um, Such is the case now that Mama Joyce is singing a new tale of concern over Tucker not being qualified as a beneficiary in an event something were to happen to her or her daughter. Now, see, that's what I'm saying. If we talk about Mama Joyce getting her uh, white rights and wheels settlements up, and she may have had Candy as a beneficiary person. Uh, I don't know what the laws are because if you put somebody as Candy Burris and Candy Burris died, it would have to have gone back to her children, not her husband since it was nothing dealing with him being on the paper anyway. So I'm kind of confused on where Mama Joyce is going with this as she's talking about her death benefit. Because uh, I think that's how it reverts. She, it goes back to any children and maybe grandchildren and maybe go back to the estate. But um, um, Mama Joyce should have her own or last will rights and testimonies of uh, a document or who she wants it to go to if she did if she had candy then she had riley then she maybe had one of her sisters and the sisters follow after that uh i'm pretty sure her estate would have been okay uh, candace to see so we're gonna go to riley her granddaughter it wouldn't have went straight over to Todd. So I'm very, very concerned about why Mama Joyce, if I'm understanding the laws correctly on these beneficiaries of these policies, life insurance policies you set up. It, it only goes to who is on that list that you already had. And I don't think it gives you but maybe three uh, at the very maximum that you can use, uh, that they can go one down the line of whoever still living. But when it comes to that house, uh, you know, Candy definitely should have structured that a little better. Uh, and I'm pretty sure she could have made something uh, as if she gave the house to Mama Joyce, but her name was still on it. And Mama Joyce maybe was a secondary or co-signer for the house or uh, like I said, if it was already outright bought and paid for, there was no need to put anybody's name on the deed itself for the person that it was supposed to be, the house was supposed to be for anyway. Now, like I said, I don't know if Candy uh, don't feel good about her mama uh, and her who her mother dates and this, that, and the third, or who she may marry, and then she see her money going to somebody else if her mama uh, became deceased and her mother was married of course she would not want to kick um her mother's or her stepdad's out stepdad out the house especially if she liked it, him but if it was somebody she didn't like didn't really care for and she was just playing nice because it was her mother's husband or whatnot or boyfriend then you know i could see her wanting to keep the house in her name uh in case anything transpired uh, with her mother's demise and that man is still living in the house and Candy didn't have uh, two shits to give for him then okay I could see that but if that wasn't the case and she trusts her mom then she should have just put the uh, deed to the house to her mother tied it up in a little box and a boat and left it alone okay because you know you did your due diligence as a, uh, a, a good daughter and providing for your mother and you know if your mother is very competent in her head and her mentality then you know you just gotta let have let it be what it is okay but um 
if she talking about Candy's situation where all the candies candies royalties her assets you know like damn that's what they got the prenup for it should be very ironclad or what who gets what after her demise who's in control after her demise because you can set shit up however you want to set it up and your spouse if he's not the one that's the breadwinner uh doesn't agree with it but he going to sign it just is what it is you know what i'm saying but if I were in your shoes, I would have said, hey, you come in, whatever you come in with, we made together. That's where we're going to start. Everything that I have at this point, you're not getting. It's been di- uh, divvied up between my mother, Riley, and I got two eggs that's, um, you know, in storage somewhere. And it's going to be left for those two children, okay, that we have together because I have two eggs. Hopefully, we can get two children out of there or three eggs or how many eggs she had. And then I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if he come in with shit and he's saying he's flossing with shit, he should have shit. You know what I'm saying? There's no need to ride on me when I already done told you I'm going to be good to you. We're going to come in. We're going to put X amount of dollars together. I may even pad it a little bit more, okay? But I'm still got my shit i got over here that i had prior to you prior to uh uh you know we meeting up and we're solidifying our marriage and stuff like that what we got the day after we got uh married and our um deed was processing the uh court of law meaning the certificate of marriage was filed and all that that's when we started our union together everything i got in the past it don't belong to you i ain't trying to get it i ain't trying to give it to you okay same thing with him whatever he came in with i can't have i don't have no access to it and that would have been fair now you know it really wouldn't even matter if they weren't in the positions that they call themselves in as big baller shot callers if it was just two people coming together ain't got much but they trying to get much together that's a different thing okay and it shouldn't really be no prenup you already know what i got is uh what i got you got whatever you got i got and let it be but with people coming in that's solidifying themselves earlier on prior to getting married or whatnot it just is what it is you know what i'm saying because people don't take marriage serious these days they want to treat it like it's a car uh you once you don't ran it down you don't got what you want out of it you ready to trade it in that's pretty much the analogy that i can give you that fits strictly now what people are doing not all people so i'm not trying to generalize but just the a majority of people how they're taking and seeing marriage so i mean i don't want to step to no man right now because i know my thing is i want to get married again and i believe in the institution of marriage i don't believe in any uh infidelity if that's the case you should have stayed single so may to the lord bless me uh with that particular gentleman and i can see it as factual and i see no flaws in it where you know you just basically trying to push up on me because you think i got this that and the third you know what i'm saying and it just is what it is we always have to be cautious of the sheep's and wolves clothes well the wolves and sheep's clothing i should say and that goes for a man as well as a woman uh when they try to protect themselves and what they have whether they're considered celebrities or they're just everyday hard-working people you got to protect yourselves out there period and point blank but uh, I don't really want to get too much into this article because it's basically saying the same old thing. Mama Joyce is coming back. She's seven years old. She's still starting shit because she wants her grandkids to have what is indeed theirs because their mother worked that hard to do that. She did it for Candy. She wants Candy to do it for her and her grandchildren. She wants everything to stay the way it needs to stay to make sure everybody's being taken care of and not just it being centered on Todd and Todd issues out everything. You know, I concur with her to a certain degree, but like I said, when you bring your parents into your marriage and your marriage dealings this is what you get a shit on a platter okay shit on a platter may we all eat from it <laughs> well i damn sure they gonna eat from it but that's the situation it seems that uh candy has brought herself into once again because she's not standing on her own and she's not leaning onto her own and the lowest understanding she's you know being pulled here and there and she's allowing herself to be done this way because you don't have to not a real og not a woman that's standing in her own and know her own self-worth we ain't gonna 
fool with no mess like that. We're going to get our man straight. We're going to get our family straight. Okay? Because God going to get us straight at the very end of the day anyway. All right. But that's all I pretty much had on this video. I had to retouch. And then I wanted to bring in some stuff about damn Snoop Dogg clowning the way he is. That Snoop, I think you just need to stick to him. Uh, making good rap music or rap music period and handle your own household because you ain't being too faithful over there with your wife either okay and how i see kobe Bryant, it was a try uh bryant it was a travesty travesty lord have mercy it was a travesty and a tragedy what happened to him in that uh helicopter accident along with his daughter and the rest of the people that were there but it seemed like we don't got so focused on just kobe 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 we don't forgot about everybody else which just, which is a shame within itself and that whole uh storyline they made and the thing being true that all of them are deceased but you know like i said uh it's a man's world and it's a man's perspective and they gonna always take up for their own which is their own gender they don't see anything when they cheat and when they be disrespectful to their own woman whether they married to them living with them or whatever uh what type of partnership they may have you know they want to always overlook that they want to toss that under the rug but first and foremost kobe was a man he had talent when it came to that basketball court and he can shuck and jive and make you know elegant moves or whatnot that was his arena but when it came to him being a stand-up guy a stand-up husband and father he fell very short very very short and painfully short because he cheated infidelity don't go away it just gets stronger if you're not really forgiven of that infraction that that person put you through and quite frankly i don't think vanessa ever forgot it and maybe she just kept having kids to solidify herself case in case and when she wanted to leave his ass she had a whole lot uh to go with her meaning those kids and the longevity that he's gonna have to pay their child support and definitely with having all those kids she can't really go and, and work nowhere because she's gonna be a paying a hell of a lot of um what do you call that um dang, um babysitting fees or daycare fees or whatnot because she still had i think two younger little ones anyway and uh it's a hot mess because that's how i see kobe i always seen kobe I'm, I'm sorry he died you know we all have our number coming up soon uh we don't know how we're going to be taken out of this plane of existence of the world we come to have love and been a part of but i saw kobe as a cheater i always saw him and, and even to this day see him as that because like i say everybody gonna die so you can grieve in what way how long whatever how long it takes you or whatnot but i saw kobe as a cheater nothing less and nothing more but you know, like i said if his wife wanted to love it I, I i liked it you know what i'm saying but you know gail king went over there and did what she had to do and talk about it maybe it was her network telling her she has this wonderful opportunity to you know dive back into that situation but they were going to pretty much leave it up to her discretion or how she wanted to tackle it but they really wanted it to be asked so she could have been handcuffed in that way where but well, damn do i choose you know my job over my integrity and the thought of bringing up such a you know a uh, salacious story as well as talking about this man's death and how he died is that appropriate so you know like i'm saying you gotta either use your moral compass on how you're gonna conduct yourself or you're gonna be it's just like the right angel the left devil you know what i'm saying which which, which one we gonna listen to our angel or our devil side we're gonna prosper off a story and become very solidified and what we're doing for us our uh career or we're gonna have a moral compass and say no nah, i'm not gonna ask that because it's not the time i should maybe i'll get another chance at it to rehash and re talk about uh it with some of kobe's friends at the time it was with leslie somebody she's another basketball star but she seemed to be very close with kobe and they talked a lot and stuff of this nature because you know people they're gonna ride or die with who they feel they uh line up with whether they agree with everything they do is kosher or not kosher they're gonna ride or die with those folks and, and that's okay and that's to a certain degree you know if you don't want to uh chastise your friend that's doing horrendous things out here in public you know hopefully you're doing it in private and they're listening to you and they're becoming better people but 
you know, like I said, it's just something she had to choose from her job or her integrity or what she feels about herself and her integrity or what she feels about covering a story, even with the good things or the bad things. You know, you have to make that choice and it seemed like she made her choice and then she tried to piggyback and say, well, it was her company or her employer made her do it. No, your employer can't say you're going to do this. I mean, they can insinuate, but you could still stand in your own right and say, you know, uh, she could have just asked, what you think about that thing, uh, what Kobe did? Do you think he should have been unfaithful to his wife? She could have brought it to like that because you know, we already know he cheated. We ain't going to say, you know, she didn't have to bring in the rape aspect, but she could have said, you know, that thing that happened up there in Colorado with that woman claiming what she did claim. Do you think Kobe really could have cheated or would have cheated or should he have cheated? And then let it fall like that. And she were to say and bring up more about that little lady story about being raped. That's her because you didn't say anything about rape, but Leslie said it. You know what I'm saying? And then you could have formed. Uh, your opinions and what you thought because it would have been an open discussion that Leslie had said uh, you know about the rape because she brought it up in a sense of saying rape but you did you just said the situation okay so it's like you were alluding to but you didn't put that big staple rape on there because then it changed the whole tonation of you know Kobe being a deceased uh, well known basketball player and you trying to dirty up his name by bringing up this rape allegation you know there's a certain ways you could have did it and it would have been a little bit more respectful respectful though it wasn't the right time to do it but it was just is what it was so i blame i tell snoop Dogg he needs to sit his ass down and just worry about his music career and taking about his own talking about his own household with him cheating over there with many a thoughtless uh what do you call them folks groupies you know and, and embarrassing his wife of such longevity she's hung with him and he still treat her like a piece of shit or a gum on his under his shoe you know what I'm saying so I'm like fall back fall the fuck back Snoop Dogg okay I like you and your music but when you start calling you know women bitches and hoes and all this and it, you could tell it's in a tonation that you don't like it like it's negative it ain't a good thing then you know you gotta, you gotta fall back now you gotta fall all the way back you have no reason reason to sit up there and say shit okay about anything especially if it's connecting with some parts of infidelity no nah, you ain't get sit your ass down okay that's what i want you to do um uh, gail you know she did what it what she had to do is she gonna get the backlash or she can put it out there she better be really ready to hold the water that's gonna be flooding her area okay and not trying to say well my my company told me i had to do this on my job now you said it so you're gonna have to deal with the aftermath okay and let me see, Beyonce, you know, damn, just stop, treat your daughter like a young uh, child at this time. Because she's going to get into boys, she's going to get into uh, makeup and, and, and deeming herself like she's a woman, probably in her teenage years. And then, you know, these pedophiles going to come out and try to entice her and stuff. And it's just, a, just keep the girl as young as she can at the time. Hell, let her still play with dolls if possible. You know what I'm saying? Because it just seems like Blue Eyes just growing up a little bit too fast. You put makeup on her, or uh, I wouldn't say makeup. I really couldn't see that much. I, but I said the lip, the lipstick was a little bit too much. Lip gloss as long as it's clear maybe some sparkly stuff if she likes that but straight up lipstick fuchsia at that no no and she didn't even looked uncomfortable she looked very uncomfortable uh so yeah you don't need to be doing that to that girl but that's just my pain of being a mom you could take it leave it you know i'm kosher with it but i just thought i needed to speak on it that's all i got y'all for this video it's a little longer because you know i had to put some love on y'all at the first part and then i had to speak my mind on some two separate issues that ain't have nothing to do with this video with candy and todd but yet it did kind of tie in because we're talking about infidelity breaking the family units down and you know people not taking marriage serious and uh but you still want to involve kids in this union and um um shit i don't forgot what i had to say <laughs> To make the comparison, y'all. But you know, it was just about just and growing children up just too fast, too soon. Okay, so that that's all I had to say for this video. So y'all get down in them comments, interact with one another. Let's grow together. Y'all have a happy Sunday, and I will see y'all next video. Bye bye. Or I should say, see you later, and definitely subscribe to my channel, share and like my videos, guys. And I love you to the core. Uh, see you later. Bye-bye.